All right, everyone. I just wanted to really briefly uh, do a quick version of the prisoner's dilemma. Um, you'll definitely want to take a look at the written lectures for all of the details, uh, but I just wanted to talk through it first because it can be a little hard to get your head around uh, because it's kind of not the normal way we think about things. There are good things about this way of thinking about it and bad, but I just wanted to talk through it because that might make it a little bit easier. And hopefully the audio quality on this one's not going to be as terrible as the other tries. So we have ourselves two criminals, Rabbit, Red Dog. They have been caught. They are complete strangers. They do not care about each other. All of those uh, qualifications, like I said in the written lectures, all of the things that actually break a prisoner's dilemma in real life, we want to assume away. So we're going to just assume that each of them only cares about doing the thing that's best for them. They don't care about the other person. Um, they aren't ever going to interact again, and there are no costs here beyond just the prison sentence. So uh, in this particular case, snitches are not getting stitches or anything like that. All right. So what we're going to do is we draw out our little uh, decision matrix or something. And what you want to do is, I guess, on the columns, we're going to think about uh, possible things that are out of your control. So we're going to assume just to, to draw this out, we're going to assume that we're Rabbit, right? So from Rabbit's perspective, the things that uh, he, that she has control over are the rows. Things Red Dog has control over are the columns. So let's think about how, how this can work. So uh, let's get a different color here for Red Dog. I shouldn't have drawn this so close to the top. Oh, well. Okay, so Red Dog can either stay silent or Red Dog can rat, and Rabbit can either stay silent or rat. Production quality is very high here. Let's now think about what can happen. Um, so if they both stay silent, both of them are gonna get the, their second best outcome. Rabbit is going to get second best. And in the written lectures, I give you, you know, sort of possible sentences. I tell the story a little bit more, but let's not worry about that. And then in the case where they both rat each other out, they're both going to get their second worst outcome. Okay. If Rabbit keeps her mouth shut and Red Dog rats her out, that is going to be the worst case scenario for Rabbit, right? So Rabbit's staying silent, Red Dog is ratting, so that's uh, Red Dog's best, and this is Rabbit's worst, okay? And this outcome here for, uh, for Rabbit is called, uh, this one is the, the sucker's payoff. It's a... Uh, Kind of terrible name, but you know, what else? All right. In the case where Rabbit being a rodent rats out Red Dog, and Red Dog being the loyal animal she is, keeps her mouth shut, well, then we have the reverse. We have the sucker's payoff for Red Dog because now we have uh, Rabbit's best and Red Dog's worst. Okay, so now I went through the longer argument in the written lecture. So you might think that if they're rational, since they both are gonna do exactly the same things, because all of the incentives are exactly the same for both of them, again, my world, my example, you might think that they converge on the cooperative outcome, because if they both keep their mouth shut, they can both get something that's better than what they're going to end up with if they both rat each other out. But that doesn't work because once you come to the conclusion that the other party, so if Rabbit's thinking about it, she, so if Rabbit comes to the conclusion that Red Dog is going to keep her mouth shut, we're no longer sort of, there's not two possible futures anymore because we know what's going to happen, right? Red Dog's going to keep her mouth shut, even though she's very smiley. She's going to keep her mouth shut, which means Rabbit's choosing now between her second best 
and her best outcome. So she'll choose the thing that gets her the best outcome. That means she'll rat. And of course, exactly the same thing is going to be true for Red Dog. If Red Dog reasons that Rabbit is going to keep her mouth shut because the cooperative thing is better than the second worst outcome that they'll both get if they rat, then Red Dog will decide that we are in, sorry, we're in the top row, right? So we know that Rabbit's going to stay silent. That means Red Dog's deciding between her second best and her best. So that again means that she's going to rat. That means that both of them are going to rat and they're both going to end up with their second worst outcome. And so that last part is the, the sort of shortcut version of the argument, right? It's just since there are only two possible futures here to worry about and we don't need to bring in probabilities because they're both rational, we can just reason in the way I just said. You just go, okay, imagine that, um, so if you're rabbit, imagine that Red Dog is going to keep her mouth shut. What should you do? Well, you should choose, if she's going to keep her mouth shut, you're choosing between second best and best, so you, you should do the thing that gets you the best, so you should rat, okay? So imagine that Red Dog is now going to rat. If Red Dog is going to rat, then that means Rabbit is choosing between her worst and her second worst, and the thing that gets her second worst is to rat, so she's going to rat. So in both scenarios, if Red Dog is silent, she should rat, if Red Dog rats, she should rat. So that means ratting is strictly dominant. No matter what the other party does, you should always do the same thing, which in this case is rat each other out. And that's the trap. The fact that if the payoffs are structured like this, then both parties, if they're rational, and again, if these are the only considerations, both parties will do exactly the same thing, which is rat each other out. And so if you are stuck in a prisoner's dilemma like this, to to get out of it, you have to do something which changes the way the payoffs are structured. You have to make it so that it's no longer better for both parties to rat, no matter what the other party does. And that's where things like personal connections, friendships, or threats of violence, which change, you know, we're no longer just talking about number of years. That's why those sorts of things change the payoff structure. So again, there are a lot of other details around this, but I'll leave that to the written lectures to go into. Just wanted you to have something that kind of spelled it out as best I can. And there are more details that you will want to be aware of for when you go to do your assignments. So see the written lectures. Thanks.